In today's video, what's the optimal amount of protein per meal? What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Paul Ravella from Pro Physique and this is my man Stephen Bogrand. Science with Steve. Welcome back, buddy. Hey, I like being over here. This yeah. is nice out. It is not cold out. This is Florida. <laughs> I think it's probably going to be 84 degrees today. So if you live anywhere else, sorry about your luck. But you know what? U Haul sells trucks. You can come on down anytime. True. Yeah. We're taking new Floridians all the time. There's not too many people here already. So, today's video, we're going to talk about the idea of protein because Stephen came over wanting to do a science with Stephen. For those that aren't aware, Steve is studying exercise science. He's actually about to complete his master's degree. Might have to give you a raise. Yes. You'll make it awkward and I won't have to. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're going to talk about what is the optimal amount of protein to have per meal. Um, I think it's a very common question, comes up a lot. You hear a lot of rumors, a lot of myths about, um, you know, if you eat more than 23.6 grams of protein in a single meal, then it's wasted, right? Right. So I'd love to get your perspective on um, protein intake, protein distribution per meal, and just in general, your ideas on sports nutrition. Yeah, so the interesting thing about protein is there's definitely a bottom end that we want to hit. Um, as for having a top end, now that one kind of becomes a little bit more individually based. Um, so the bottom end that you want to hit is going to be based on leucine content and threshold, uh, as well as making sure that you're getting enough of your complete protein, so all the proteins you need to build muscles um, within each meal. Uh, that is going to vary based on your lean body mass or in general your body weight. Um, you can generally... What's a, safe, what's a safe bottom line to hit? So a safe bottom line to hit I would say would be 30 grams for the vast majority of people, probably 25 grams for most females and smaller individuals. Yeah. Um, so because 25 grams in a single sitting for a female that only weighs 100 pounds, that's probably a pretty healthy amount of protein because... Oh, yeah. Um, you don't want to be getting, you know, 50% of your daily protein in a single meal. Right. But we'll get to that and we'll get to why. <laughs> right. And so the main factor with this is, is one that we have enough to stimulate muscle protein synthesis or the building of new muscle nutritionally, uh, which is half of our muscle protein balance. And the second part is, especially if you're dieting, um, a little bit more protein can help you feel fuller. It's kind of a heavier thing that goes in your stomach. Um, and so if your calories are low and the rest of your meal is smaller, um, having that little bit extra protein can kind of help you with that hunger and adherence to making sure that you're not going over your numbers. So one thing I like to talk about when people say a calorie is just a calorie, there is a difference between a calorie of carbohydrates and a calorie of protein because yes. protein has a higher thermic effect. Correct. And so when we talk about protein being used as energy, right, um, your body has to do a lot more work to break protein down, uh, send it through the system, and then make it into glucose and usable energy. Um, just simply going through that process costs your body more energy than it does, say, for carbs or for fats, which is pretty minimal or yeah. pretty much nothing. Recently, some research has come out that suggests that bulking on a higher protein diet can make it more difficult to store as body fat. Right, So, and I think that what we see, one, is the thermic effect of that. So simply put, it's your body doesn't want to do the extra work to break that right. down, make it into glucose, then convert it into fat, right. to then store it. Um, so especially if you're in a calorie surplus. Now, if you're in a very big deficit, yeah. we can see some differences there, and you definitely can overeat on protein and add body fat during that time. Um, but when you're in a surplus, when you're in the bulking season, the improvement season. Yeah, and it's also, deal. for anyone that's tried to eat a very high protein diet, it doesn't digest that well. You get, you know, you get like the protein stomach, you get like gas. Um, digesting protein in high amounts can make you feel full all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there there's a lot of issues with digesting protein, uh, and that's why I think yeah. sometimes it can be beneficial to, you know, raise up your protein a little bit when calories are getting lower in prep. Yeah. Um, there may also be some benefits in regards to maintaining lean body mass. There's definitely a benefit to satiety because higher food volume, you feel like you're eating more. So yeah. there are benefits. So let's talk about 
the maximum amount because this is something where I feel like there's the most confusion where people say okay if if you have more than 40 grams of protein in a single meal it is wasted mm. let's talk about why that's not true okay so and this one I can relate to very well because I remember when we first met I was yeah. eating what 400 grams of protein a day yeah that's, <laughs> yeah. that's not a fun I used um, to do that that is not fun <laughs> And so what we talk about, or what they're talking about when they say it's wasted, right? Protein's wasted. Uh, they're talking about, are you getting to build more muscle out of it, right? Are you creating any more protein uh, synthesis, right? The answer is absolutely, once we hit a certain threshold, like we see, and the research will back this up, uh, there is no benefit to added protein in right. terms of gaining muscle. Right. Um, the protein's still gonna go through your system, it can still be broken down, it can still be used for energy. Yes. Um, so in terms of satiety, it, it obviously can help. Um, in terms of energy, yes, your body can use it, so it's not going to waste per se. Yes, um, if it's not, otherwise you would have diarrhea, okay? Yes. So if you eat 100 grams of protein in a single sitting, your body is gonna slow down the absorption. It's gonna slow down digestion. You're going to extract those calories out of that food. Right. But after that initial 25 or 30 grams of protein where you hit your leucine threshold, there's not a greater benefit to that single meal. Correct. So what are we gonna suggest people do for protein for the day? Let's talk about two different people. We'll talk about a 100 pound female and a 200 pound male. We'll just All right. break it up. So uh, my assumption is obviously gonna be that if you're watching us, you're resistance training or you're You're active. interested in physique enhancement. Right. Um, so my normal go-to is about a a um, pound of body weight should be about a gram of protein a day, especially yep. if you're dieting. Uh, we can do a little bit more. Uh, so let's talk about a 100 pound female. What I'm going to be, be looking for is probably around that 25 grams four times a day. Yep. Uh, here's a couple reasons why. So first and foremost, the muscle protein synthesis or building new muscle, um, there's what we call a refractory period. So we can stimulate it, we have to wait for uh, dietary protein to come back down and then we can stimulate it again. Yep. If we keep protein up, it just goes, it still goes down, but then it doesn't get re-spiked. So we're looking for anywhere between like four to six so hours. So this is minutes. where the old idea that you should eat protein every two hours to keep your amino acid levels high in your blood, this has actually yep. been shown to create a refractory response that right. never allows it to spike again. Correct. And they essentially, they put an IV in somebody and just yeah. injected them with amino acids. Dr. Strain. Campbell talks about this and it's really funny um, when he does. <laughs> So what we're looking for is four to six hours is probably a pretty good window of time. Uh, I find that that even even two or three if you just trained. I would I would say three is probably my my yeah, end. But a lot of people like yeah. I you know I hear them say well if it, if it's six hours or four hours and I just trained do I have to wait? Right. I, I think digestion in my opinion is sped up. Muscle protein synthesis yeah. is sped up because of the training. Right. And Dr. Campbell will agree with you on that okay. one as well. Um, he'll say that if I had protein before my workout and my option is to have protein after my workout or not have protein after my workout, right. I'm having protein after my workout. Yeah. Um, so it's, don't, don't feel like you're gonna lose out on all your right. progress if you don't have something immediately, but you know, typically as coaches, we're gonna suggest you have your next protein meal as close to your workout window as possible without you know, being neurotic. Correct. Um, and so what that does is not only does it say, all right, I can spike protein synthesis evenly throughout the day. Yeah, so times. four times if you're right. spacing it out. Um, but it also gives you protein four times a day spaced out pretty well to help with hunger and satiety. Also. Hunger, blood sugar, digestion, you know, right. you got something to look forward to. We are proponents of lifestyle dieting, right? Yes. So we're not anti-fasting, we're not anti-keto, we're not anti any of that. We're all about what fits your lifestyle, but we as physique coaches have to give you advice that we feel is the best. And then you can make your decision if it's the best for you. So right. if I have a 200 pound male, I'm gonna want him on 40, 35 to 40, maybe 45 grams of protein per meal minimum, just because it gets difficult to hit 220, 230 grams of protein that I might have that person on if you're having 30 gram meals. Right. You're not gonna eat eight times a day to get there, right? So right. Um, we're gonna be eating larger meals. To, 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 to accomplish that, I'm gonna space them out three, right. four, five hours, maybe even six, just depending on the person. I personally like the four to five hour window. I feel that's perfect yep. for, for athletes. But if it doesn't fit your lifestyle because of shift work, because of your schedule, um, right. because you prefer to fast, Mm -hmm. then that's fine. But this is just what we suggest, what, what the evidence shows right. might be best and what we as competitors, athletes, and coaches have seen to work best. So yep. there is no maximum amount of protein that's bad for you. Correct. There is such a thing as too little protein because you don't hit your leucine threshold. Yes. So getting 15 grams of protein 10 times a day 
is definitely worse than getting 30 grams of protein yeah. five times a day. And you definitely want to make sure that it's a complete protein in terms. So yeah. if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, whatever the case may be, yep. understand you have to pair your proteins to make sure you're getting complete proteins. Otherwise, it's still not yeah, doing and you the can, trick. You can obviously add leucine to any. Right. Um, they have actually shown that by adding leucine into the studies, they got the same response as a whole protein source. So hopefully that helps you guys out. So basically, to answer your question, there's no maximum amount of protein. I mean, yeah, if you can eat 200 grams of protein in a single sitting, you're only going to get one, one boost to muscle protein synthesis, but you're going to be digesting that protein for a long time. Oh, yes. So, all right, guys, hopefully that helped. Science with Steve, thanks for coming over, buddy. And uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.